responsable, ¿sí? no hay otra alternativa. Yo le digo a él, mire, su papá es brillante. Mire, en esto él geniecillo, ¿verdad? Él, pero porque no él cree que era bueno, sino que él se esforzaba por ser bueno. Mire, inteligentísimo el papá. Pues yo no soy bruta tampoco.
Okay, everybody, welcome to the class. Today we're starting our last week of class. So by next uh, Tuesday, we will be finishing the whole module. It's very important. For first of all, that your company, so you send the information, so you inscribe on the next level. And also to finish the platform this weekend. It's very, very important. So, and we're gonna start the class today. Also remember that you will be receiving the Insafor um, survey. So that is something that we do in the last class. You don't have to do that by yourself. We need to do it together. Okay, so let's check. And uh, this is the class of today. So number 21, and also you will find here the, the question for tonight. So we're going to check the attendance and then start all over. Ada Azucena Cáceres Mendoza. Ana Claudia González Velázquez. Present teacher. Good. Dani Josué García Martínez. Present. Good. Fernando Marvin González Martínez. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejía. Present teacher. Good. Heidi Eugenia Salguero de Rivas. Ileana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Present teacher. Good. Sorry, teacher, present. I couldn't okay. Oh, don't worry. Jose Marcos Rodríguez Ayala. Jose Osmin Rivas Navas. Present. Good. Jose Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Present teacher. Good. Juan Miguel Brand Mejía. María Alejandra Barrientos Romero. Ramón Enrique Mata Escobar. Roberto Luis Umaña Orellana. Roxana Ivet Asensio de Mejía. Sonia Guadalupe Benítez de Claros. Present teacher. Good. Suleima Yvonne Moreno de Hernández. Okay. Very well, my friends. We're going to start then the class of today. So we're going to start with uh, the book. We're going to check a little bit of grammar today. So this is it, how to use the verbs followed by infinitives or gerunds. This one is a little bit different because then we're gonna change the meaning. So if you use a gerund, it's going to be different than if you use the infinitive. I mean, the meaning is going to be the different one, okay? So uh, look at examples and the box, then complete the exercise below, it says. So we're gonna check about the chart. Let's see, um, Jose Wilfredo, could you please help me reading the chart? Okay. Uh, okay, teacher. Okay, I thought it was not possible. Let me, let me see. Is it, is it possible for you? Yeah. Okay, good. So, how to use the birds? Followed by infinitive or yarns. Change in meaning. Look at the examples in the box. Then complete the exercise below. These verbs can be followed by either by yarn or infinity with the change in the meaning. Forget, remember, stop and try. Forget yarn. Forget plus yarn. It means forget something that happened in the past. This one usually occurs in negative sentence. Uh, forget. I'll never forget proposing the initiative to improve the neighborhood close to the company building. Remember plus yarn. It means to remember, recall something that happened in the past. I, I remember investing investing on social projects last year. I invested on the projects before now. Stop plus year. It means to end an action. 
uh, the company has stopped providing funds for cha for cat for charity. I guess I don't know. Uh, charity is the right meaning. Yeah, yeah the right charity. Yeah, okay. Charity. Plus year. Try Jerome. Uh, try plus Jerome. Then the mm -hmm. this form is used when something is done as an ex experiment experiment, but the result no may not be successful. Plus, uh, forget plus Jerome. Uh, it means to forget to perform a responsibility, responsibility task. Don't forget to meet us at five for the meaning. Remember plus infinity. It means to remember to perform responsibility task. Uh, please remember to leave the reports over my desk. In the future, uh, please leave the reports over my desk. Stop plus yarn. Stop, stop plus infinity. It means to interrupt. To interrupt. Uh, an action to start a new one. I was finishing the report and I stopped to answer uh, the phone. Try plus infinity. It means to attempt something to make an effort. And then, uh, let me see. Okay. Uh, eight, we need to increase our presence in the media. Let's try to help in the public with uh, scholarships. Uh, I will try to contact them tomorrow morning. Perfect. Thank you. So, as you can see, the important part here is that. For this verse, I mean, this is something that you need to remember by heart. You need to memorize that one. Forget, remember, stop, and try. When you use any of those verbs, if you use a jeton after those verbs, the meaning is going to be different than when you use an infinitive after those verbs. So it's going to be totally different. So, for example, forget plus jeton. It means to forget something that happens in the past, okay? This form usually occurs in negative sentence, but it's not necessary to have a negative. I mean, it's going to be very a good idea for us to use that in affirmative. For example, I'll never forget proposing the initiative to improve the neighborhood close to the company's building. So that sentence is like, well, it says I'll never, so it's going to be future the sentence, but uh, the action happened in the past. Okay, never for never forgot proposing. Forget proposing is going to be an action that was proposing in the past. Okay, but if we use forget plus the infinitive, that is something like not necessarily for the future, but something that is um, is meant to happen, right? So that's why it says it means to forget to firm, to perform a responsibility or task. So it's like uh, like in Spanish, don't forget to do something, right? So. Don't forget to meet us at five for the meeting. So the meeting is in the future. It's going to be at five and then we don't have to forget. So this is the first one. And then the next one is remember. So for example, uh, we remember any gerund. It means to remember or recall something that happened in the past again. So most likely all the gerunds are going to be four actions in the past or something that is linked to the verb and the action that is linked to the verb is going to be in the past. So for example, I remember investing on social projects last year. So I invested on the projects before now because I remember, okay? Uh, that's what I did it. I invested because I remember I had to do it. It was a good idea. So if we use remember plus infinitive, it means to remember to perform. So again, in the future, a responsibility to, or task. Please remember to leave the reports over my desk. So in the future, don't forget, please. So please remember. You can see it's kind of the same, right? Forget and remember is kind of the same situation. Okay. Then we have stop plus general. It means to end an action. So for example, the company stopped providing funds to, for charity last year. Again, is something that is in the past. I mean, that was stopped already. I mean, stopped in the past. 
And then the other one is a stop plus infinity. It means to interrupt an action to start a new one. For example, I was finishing the report and I stopped to answer the phone. So in this case, this is a clause. Okay, we are using the the uh, past continuous and then we use the simple past. So it's going to be very clear, but you can use it for something that you need to stop so you can do another thing, okay? And uh, the last one is a strike plus genome. This is a use when something is done as an experiment, but the result may not be successful. So we need to increase our presence in the media. Let's try helping the public with scholarship. So that is something like, we can give it a shot, but we don't know exactly what is going to, to, to happen. So it's like an idea, you know, something in general. We can try this, it's something like that. Uh, let's try doing this or let's try doing this, like providing idea. On the other hand, try plus infinity. It means to attempt something to make an effort. So I will try to contact them tomorrow morning. I mean, that action, I will try it. I will actually do the effort. I will do the action. I don't know if I will be able to contact the person, but I'm going to try several times. So on the first one, try helping is like ideas that we can do. Maybe we're going to do it, maybe not. On the second one, yes, we're going to attempt. We are actually doing the action. We don't know if it's going to be successful, but we're going to give it a shot. Okay. So as you can see, uh, it's kind of the same uh, verb with the gerund or the infinitive. But uh, verbs are, are going to function in a different way. The meaning is going to be totally different. Uh, the good thing is that it's kind of the same situation. I mean, it's either the past or the future, right? So that is a good thing. But if you are going to express, for example, an idea, a sentence that is uh, for the future, remember to use the general. Uh, I mean, for the for the future, it's going to be an infinity. For the past, it's going to be a general. That is kind of the main idea, but we're going to check some other verbs. By now, this is like the introduction of this one. So the question is, do you have questions about this? Infinitives and gerunds after a verb. So by now we're checking just four verbs. Forget, remember, stop and try. Do you remember that last week we checked some verbs that you can use either a gerund or an infinitive and the meaning was the same or the difference was no big deal. It was not huge. In this case, yes, the meaning is going to be different. And that's, uh, if you express an idea incorrectly, I mean, the other person is going to understand something totally different. So questions. No questions. Okay, let's make the exercise. Number six, complete the sentence using the verbs in parentheses. Read meanings to decide whether to use a gerund or infinity. Compare your answers with the classmates. So we're going to compare together. So you see that in the parentheses, the verbs, the two verbs that we're going to use, try and organize. So it's going to be try to organize or try organizing, okay? And there is like a, like a tip there after the sentence to attempt interruption, uh, perform activities as don't forget something that happened in the past. So that is, that, that is the explanation there. Okay, so I don't think it's gonna be that difficult, but anyways, I'm gonna give you a few minutes for you to think about it. To If you have printed the, the book, you can fill it out uh, or I mean, you can write it down if you want in a notebook. I will give you some minutes and let me know. Well, I will give you some minutes and I will ask you if you are ready to, to share.
Okay, have you finished already? Let's check number one. Who wants to share number one? For me, teacher, is uh, try with Jerun because it's an action in the past. Very good. So yes. is that the manager try organizing a meeting last week? Perfect. That is it. Very nice. So the manager try uh, organizing. That uh -huh. would be a general. Very good. Perfect. Okay. Nice. Number two. Who wants to share number two? Anybody? Hello. Number two, anybody? Teacher, you see, um, he was talking on the phone and he stopped writing a note on a post-it. Okay, he was talking on the phone and he stopped writing a note on a post-it. Everybody agrees on this one? Yeah, yeah, it's a past action, right? Okay, yeah. very good, nice. Number three, who wants to share number three? Please remember to include your name, your names in the application forms. Perfect. So that is it. Please remember to include your names in the application forms. Very nice. Good. Number four. Who wants to share number four? Anybody? I, if you want, I can try. Of For course. me, the employees will never forget to prepare a dinner for those affected by the air. Oh, no, no. <laughs> it's a pass. Okay. The employees will never forget preparing a dinner for those affected by the earthquake. Don't forget something that happened in the past. <laughs> so that is it. Good. It's going to be Jaron. So the Jaren, employees, exactly. yeah, will never forget preparing. That will be the one. Good. Nice. Number five. Who wants to share number five? Number five. Anybody? For me, it's uh, the says, companies should try helping smaller companies to increase their own profits. Very good. Try helping because it's an experiment. I mean, it's not that you really want to try something like that, but it's uh suggestion something like that very good perfect roxanne and uh, number six somebody was there trying to help so help us
don't forget to be there on time to receive your award. Very good. So that will be, don't forget to be there on time to receive your award. So it's something that you need to do in the future, right? So it's going to be that one. Uh, any questions about this, my friends? Sometimes I believe that this, this kind of grammar is something that naturally we we can use it, right? I mean, we have seen a lot of examples and we've been practicing English that much that I guess that is kind of natural. But anyways, we need to remember this. And uh, we have some other verbs here, so. Okay, verbs uh, change their meaning. The first one we saw with it already, forget. So, um, look back in the past. He'll never forget spending so much money on his first computer. I know that he'll never is future, but forget spending is an action in the past, right? And the infinitive is going to be for the future. Don't forget to spend money on the tickets, okay? Something that you don't have to do. Don't You don't have to forget to do, that is it. Another verb that is in this list is go on, okay? So, uh, for the gerund, is to continue with the same thing, to move on, right? Go on reading the text, so continue, please. If I use an infinitive after go on, is to change the activity. Go on to read the text. That means that I was doing something else and I, now I need to, to read. So it's not going to be the same. The first one, is going to do uh, go on continue doing the same activity. And the second one is you're doing right now this one, but I need you to do this other thing. Any questions with this? With go on? Okay, let's check the other one, mean. So with Jaron, uh, it means that something has to be done to get a result. For example, you have forgotten your homework again. That means phoning your mother. Okay, so that is since you do since you did this or you didn't do this. Uh, I that means that I need to do something else as a result as a consequence. Okay, if I use an infinitive, is intend to do something. I meant to phone your mother, but my bubble didn't work. So I wanted, but I I couldn't. I was not able to. I wanted, I really wanted to do it, but it was impossible for me. So that is infinity. Any questions with this? Could you repeat, please? Definitely. So this verb is mean. So if we use mean, and a gerund after mean, the meaning of that two verse is going to be that something has to be done to get a result. So since you didn't do this, for you to do it, I need to act. I need to do an action. So in the example, it says you have forgotten your homework again. That means phoning your mother. So for the next time, if I need you, if I want you to bring your homework, I need to call your mother. So uh, that means, that means phoning your mother. It means that uh, for, for you to do this action, I need to do this other action. And on the other hand, for the infinitive is that you try, that you had the intention to do something. For example, I meant to phone your mother, but my mobile didn't work. I did it, I wanted, I really wanted to do it, but it was not possible. Okay, I get it. Thank you. Very good. Perfect. So the other one is regret. Okay. Regret. Uh, well, if you use that, uh, if you use a gerund after regret, it means that you did something in the past and you are not happy about it. For example, I regret being late for school. Oh, shoot. I don't know why the traffic or something happened, but I didn't want to be late so i regret being late for school so but if we use an infinitive after regret that means to tell bad news and you are not happy about it okay so it's that 
It's not that you regret something that happened to you in the past, but you regret to, to, to come via message, to say bad news. So for example, we regret to inform you that the flight has been delayed for another two hours. So it's like, like very polite. It's a very polite way for us to say uh, something bad to other people. We regret to tell you that you didn't pass the English course because you didn't finish the platform on time, for example. So, any questions with uh, regret? No, teacher. Good, good. If you have questions, let me know. That's why we're here. So remember, we checked that already, but anyways, we're gonna see this example. So uh, if we use a general after remember, it means to look back in the past. So I remember switching off the lights when I went on holiday. I remember I did it. That is in the past. If we use infinitive after remember, it means that it's an action in the future. So remember to switch off the lights when you go on holiday. So this is a very good example because you see that, that they are very similar sentences, but the meaning is totally different. And the first one is, I remember I did it. And the second one is, remember to do it. Okay, that will be it. Remember to switch the off the lights when you go on holiday. Any questions with this? Not to chair, but no, clear. Sir. Good, good. So the other one is stop. If we use uh, a gerund after uh, stop, it, well, it's to stop an activity, right? I stopped smoking. I did it already. So I don't do that anymore. Infinitive is stop in order to do something. So I stopped to smoke. Right now, I need to. I, I will do it right now, okay? Because, but it's not something that I did in the past, so. I will stop in this very moment to smoke. And the other one is I stop the activity at all. This is something that also we checked in the book. So any questions on this? Okay, try also we check that in the uh, in the book. So uh, if we use a gerund after try, that means that you are going to test something. It's like a suggestion is, I don't know. Uh, it's like, we could do this, right? So I tried taking an aspirin, but it didn't help. Oh, this is very clear. Actually, in that case, it's very clear that you try something and it didn't work, right, at all. Okay, uh, and the infinitive is to do something that is not easy. Try to be quiet when you come home late. So try not to, do a lot of noise, right? So try, and that, that is an action for the future as, as well. We checked that already, but we have some other. Um, so for like, you can say, I like reading books, or you can say, I like to read books. There is normally no difference in meaning, normally, okay? So use the gerund when like is used in the sense of enjoy. Example, I like riding my bike. Oh, actually I ride, I really like riding my bike. That is amazing, I really love it. And uh, use the infinity when you do something in the sense of an habit. For example, I like to do my homework in the afternoon. I think it is good to do my homework in the afternoon. So if I use general, it's like I enjoy, I love it. But if I use an infinitive, it's like Miss Anavit, I usually do it like that. I like to do it that way. Okay. Any questions so far? So you can see that even if you use the same word, sometimes the, div uh, the meaning is different. And that uh, that is why we need to be careful on the way that we're going to express our things. It's very, very important so other people understand. Mind the following example says, I like watching films. I would like to watch the film. So it's similar, but not the same. I like watching films. Is I really love it. Actually, I really love to watch films. It's, it's very important for me. So, and the other one is, I would like to watch the film. So it's going to be like, uh, yeah, I would like to do that, an activity, 
that is not like I don't know if I'm going to enjoy it, but I mean it's going to do something good for me to to watch them. I really have the desire to watch them. There is another one like be afraid. Just general when you worry about something. I'm afraid of having an accident. Okay. In other cases, there is no difference in meaning, whether we use gerund or infinitive. I'm afraid to go by bike on this road. I'm afraid of going by bike on this road. That is exactly the same. I'm afraid to do this activity because of something that like might be dangerous or anything like that. Okay. Need. If we use a gerund after need, then the sentence has a passive meaning. The window needs cleaning. Yeah, I'm not doing it. Somebody has to do it. Okay, so it's a passive meaning. So it needs somebody to clean that. So, but that is no big deal, to be honest with you. Used to. Okay, the form to be used to plus gerund means that the person is familiar with something. He is used to smoking, gerund again. So he still smokes. He is used to, okay? The form used to with not to be, the form used to plus the infinitive means that the person did something in the past. He used to smoke. He does not smoke anymore. He stopped that action already. So um, I believe that that, as I was telling you, this is kind of natural, right? So if you say he's used to smoking, it's something like an habit. He right now he is used to. Okay, remember that if we are going to use the verb to be, and he's used to, and a verb, then the verb has to be in gerund. Okay, that is very important. And it's attention. He is used to smoke. It does not exist. We cannot say that one. On the other ones, you might change that one, and maybe the meaning is going to be possible uh, to change only, but you will be able to use it. But in this case, it does not exist at all. Okay, any questions with these verbs? Yeah, how can we identify the verbs to apply the gerunds or infinitive form? You need to learn them. It's like <laughs> when you when you learn the simple past tense and the past participle, you need to learn. You need to learn and then practice. Okay. Very good. Any other question? I'm sorry, and is there like a list, there is a number, approximately? I mean, yeah, there are some, uh, there is like a list of all the verbs. There are not many. I mean, as you remember, um, the most of the verbs, they can use it with either gerund or infinitive. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember that the first one that we checked, it was just with gerunds, right? And then we mm -hmm. checked the ones that we can use with gerunds and with uh, infinitive, and the meaning was the same or very likely. Mm -hmm. And these ones are the ones that are different. So these are like the most. In this one, you're not going to find many more, maybe two or three more. Uh, so there are not many. So, yes. And, and huh? Do they have like a name? Like, for example, uh, verbs are regular, irregular. Or we have moral verbs. Do they have like something that identify them? No, no. Uh, you just need to remember, learn by heart which one and what is the meaning of that one. So for example, in these ones, that are the ones that you can use either or, but the meaning is different. Uh, you need to remember, you need to learn, practice. Mm -hmm. My best advice for you is to, uh, if you want, let's do something. Uh, what I can do for you tomorrow, uh, I can send you some links for you to practice. Mm -hmm. So I know that the practice is very important. Maybe right now you understood and you say, yeah, yeah, yeah I get it, I get it. But in one year <laughs> no, that you now, are- I, uh -huh, <laughs> Yeah, but you, you need to learn. That is the only way. This is okay. exactly like, and, and yeah, there is not a list that this is regular, not regular. I mean, depending, sometimes depending on the situations, the, the verb that you're going to use is going to make a sense mm -hmm. or not. So 
you just need to learn. The good thing, the good news, is that they are not a lot. Uh -huh. okay. They are just a few, right? Because, uh, well, that's why I brought this other to you. In the book, there were just four. Mm -hmm. four not enough, right? Uh, we have these ones, and maybe there are two or three more, but they are not a lot. Mm, okay. Thank you. Very well. Any other question? No more questions. Okay. So we are going to now continue with the book. We have this. How to write effective topic sentences. So remember that this kind of grammar that we're checking is for you to learn to write paragraph or essays or um, things in general. So we are getting closer to those aspects and where we're going to uh, ask you to write about something with some specific rules that you need to accomplish. So uh, this is part of this, okay? So, and then let's read on that one. Giselle, could you please help us and read the chart? Not possible, okay, uh, Roxanne. Okay, um, writing effective, right? Yeah, how to write effective topic sentence, yeah. Okay, writing effective topic sentence requires more than extending the subject of the paragraph. A good topic sentence is specific and well focused. 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 It guides the in, entire in, entire entire thank you uh, it guides the entire paragraph to write an effective topic sentence take following guidelines into consideration first one make sure the topic sentence state an opinion at and not at fact, but corporate social responsibility means that organizations have moral and ethical responsibilities. Opinions, organization should adopt corporate social responsibilities in order to improve local communities. Two, a state an opinion rather than just announce the topic. Announcement, CSR requires organization to adopt a broader view of, e of its responsibilities. Opinion, CSR requires organization to adopt a broader view of its responsibilities, keeping in mind the broad range of activities to give something back to the public. Three, avoid vague, vague, is correct? Vague. Uh, vague. Uh, vague. Okay, avoid vague words and sentence that don't do, sorry. Avoid vague words and sentence that do not express an opinion. Page sentence. There are about many different ways for organization to be socially responsi responsible. It does not state an opinion. Organization take take no part in social responsibility project. Okay, very good, perfect. Thank you. So, uh, this is the topic sentence. It's kind of easy, actually. So the topic sentence tells the reader what the paragraph is about, its main idea. So uh, that's why this is very important. So for example, if you are writing an essay and the topic sentence is not clear, it's not expressing an opinion or it's using vague uh, vocabulary and not that clear, the whole essay is not good. The whole paragraph is not good. 
So that's why this is very important. So writing effective topic sentences require more than stating the subject of the paragraph. So it's not just the subject. So it's not, we're gonna speak about this. No, right. A good topic sentence is specific and well-focused. So it has to have some elements. It guides the entire paragraph. So when you read the topic sentence, you know what is about the paragraph, at least the paragraph, if not the whole reading. To write an effective topic sentence, take the following guidelines, it says. Number one, make sure the topic sentence states an opinion and not a fact. It's very important to use words that express opinion. So for example, in, the, in this one, it says, organization should, with should, we are expressing an opinion, right? Organizations should adopt corporate social responsibilities in order to improve local communities. That is a very good topic sentence. Uh, in the fact, actually says, corporate social responsibility means that organizations have moral and ethical responsibilities. That is not an opinion, okay? So if we use words and provide an opinion, that is better, okay? Number two, we need to state an opinion rather than just announce the topic. So it's not just the subject, it's not the topic itself, but again, it's an opinion. So in this case, CSR requires organization to adopt a broader view of its responsibilities. It's not correct because that is just the topic. It's not an opinion. So the other one is that CSR requires organization to adopt a broader view of its responsibilities, keeping in mind, so that is an opinion, keeping in mind the broad range of activities to give something back to the public. So that definitely is an opinion and it's very clear. On the number three, it says avoid vague words. So please be specific, right? And sentences that do not express an opinion. So opinion is the key here, okay? So uh, there are about many different ways for organizations to be socially responsible. That is very vague, it's not that specific, okay? Organizations take no part in social responsibility pride. It does not state an opinion, so. Those are very uh, useful whenever you are going to write a paragraph. Remember, as I was telling you, that these are going to be together. I don't remember if it's going to be on the next level or on the other one that you are going to be required to write essays. So all these things are very, very important. Remember that we are speaking in English and that is a different language than Spanish. So definitely it's not going to be, I mean, it's going to be different. And it's very specific on the rules on what you need to do and what you need to put through the paragraph sentences or the whole reading. Uh, what, uh, so it's clear and is with these specific orders and specific elements that are very important. So the question is, do you have any question? No questions, clear as horchata. Hey, you haven't participated that much today. Let's see on this exercise. Number nine, read the following topic sentences and identify the reason why they are effective or not. Suggest an improved version for the ones that are not effective. Compare your suggestions with classmates. And here are the six sentences for you to, according to what we checked, before you will be able to identify them. So this is going to be made in, uh, let me just check if it's possible. No, it's not possible. Okay, we need to do it like this because it's not possible to do groups like now. So I'm gonna give you a few minutes and you can check into that one. If you have the book there, you can review the chart on top or I can move it if you want. So let's work on that, my friends. I will give you a few minutes. So we need to rewrite or not to rewrite. So for example, in the number one, you are going to say this is effective. Or no, it's not effective. Ah, okay. If, okay. if it's effective, why? If it's not effective, mm -hmm. why not? Mm, okay, okay, I understand. Thank you. Actually, it says after that one suggests an improved version. So yes, you need to mm -hmm. rewrite 
the ones that are not effective, right? Because not all of those are mm -hmm. effective. Okay, let's try. Let's give it a shot. Very good.
Okay, have you finished or uh, do you need more time? Okay, let's check. So number one, is effective or not? That's the first question. Mm, I think that is not effective Good. because it's just announcing a topic. It's not providing either an opinion. Perfect. So definitely it's not effective and that is the reason why. It's like a topic, a subject topic or anything mm -hmm. like that. So, what would be a good option if you want to change? <laughs> it could be something like uh, I will. Uh, I thinking like I'm thinking something like ethical responsibility should concern societal societal yeah societal expectations. I don't know if I can use should. Yeah, definitely. So that is going to be very good. Ethical responsibilities should concern societal expectations. Maybe we can add something else, right? Mm. Societal expectations to create good CSR programs, for example. Ah, okay, okay, yeah. That would be fantastic. Very good. Okay. Perfect, thank you. Number mm. two, who wants to share number two? Number two, my friends. Well, for me, for me, sorry. <clears throat> for me, uh, it's effective because um, they provide uh, maybe extra information, uh, like a little opinion about the topic and you can get it the main idea. Okay, so let's read about it. Organizations are expected to do more than just comply with law, but also make productive efforts to anticipate and meet the norms of society. Yeah, I believe that is effective. I mean, it's, yeah, it's, it's good, it's good. Perfect, very good, nice. What about number three, anybody? I think it's the same. Uh, it's effective because uh, they provide uh, a main idea. It's like a announce, and you can get the main uh, idea. Okay. So for me, it's not effective. Why not? Let's see. <laughs> because it's. Um, it's stating a fact because it says that the society needs the corporation and vice versa. I was I have that really on that uh, because I don't know if it's true that they need each other. Uh, well, actually, you are right. It, but the only change that we need here is to change that and change it to our opinion, right? Mm -hmm. So I think I uh, need corporations to give their people employment infrastructure. So, um, yeah, we just need to include some one or two words. So we change this one into an opinion. Uh, Maybe it's the verb need that is like uh, yeah. something. Uh -huh. That's not good. Need should be removed. I mean, you can do that one. You can remove and you can set everything else. So societies mm -hmm. should allow corporations to give their people employment infrastructure and corporations should, on the other hand, allow healthy societies. Something like that would be better. Mm -hmm. So that is something that we can do in this kind of exercises. We can remove words and we can um, change things, right? In this case, it's almost perfect, but that need is the word that is not doing very well. Okay. Good. Number four, anybody? Else wants to share number four.
I don't know if this is a fact. Okay, it says number four, companies suffer image issues when they don't participate in CSR activities. That is true. It's, a, it's, a, it's expressed as a fact. So it's not good. It's not effective because of that one. How could we change that one? So it's better. And if we add the like verb to May, May. uh-huh. Okay, very good. Nice. I like it. So that is very <laughs> good. <laughs> may suffer, may sisters when they don't participate in CSR. Very good. Uh, nice. Good. Number five. Who wants to share number five? I, I guess that we okay. have to modify. Um, okay, so uh, so what Phil says is perfect. Danny, uh, what do you say? Uh, no, we have to modify. Uh, which one? What what do we have? Uh, because not only international companies, even the national companies. Okay, yeah, we can add something like that. Social and environmental issues should be the priority for national and international companies. Something like that? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Danny, you were saying something. Yeah, uh, I say that for me, it's it's okay. It's a, it's a express an opinion rather Very than a fact. Yeah, the main idea is an opinion. So yeah, if we we can leave it like that and add uh, the ideas of what I would call. Very good. So number six, one primary focus on corporate social responsibility is the environment. So is effective? Is not effective? I think it is not effective. Is is like is more like a fact, and a notion it could be a should something like this. Very good. One primary focus on corporate social responsibility should be the environment. Okay. Nice. Perfect. Very good. I see that you are ready for the essays. <laughs> not yet, of course. As you can see, my friends here, we finished the book. Nice. So these days we are going to use it to, to practice some things. By now we are going to, we're going to check the attendance. Okay. And uh, as I was telling you tomorrow, I will send you some exercises uh, about the journal so you can practice a little bit more. Ada, Susana Cáceres, Mendoza. Ana Claudia González Velázquez. Good. Present teacher. Very good. Dani Josué García Martínez. Present. Good. Fernando Marvin González Martínez. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejía. Present teacher. Good. Heidi Eugenia Salguero de Rivas. Present teacher. Good. Ileana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Present teacher. Good. Jose Marcos Rodriguez Ayala. Present. Good. Jose Osmin Rivas Navas. Jose Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Present teacher. Good. Juan Miguel Brand Mejía. María Alejandra Barrientos Romero. Present. Ramón Enrique Mata Escobar. Roberto Luis Umaña Orellana. Roxana Yvette Asensio de Mejía. Present. Good. Suleima Ivonne Moreno de Hernández. Perfect. So, um, we are going to... Uh, Sonia... No. <laughs> I got you here. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Very good. Perfect. And who was in the chat? Ah, who said it? Okay. Very good. So we're going to check about the, uh, well, we finished already the book, so we're going to see some exercises, you know, in English. And we were speaking some different topics throughout the last week. Okay. And uh, we're going to do some tests for English so we can review some of the things. Okay, these are going to be not long tests, but then, uh, well, actually, 
there are many of these, but it's going to be a very good thing. So um, let's check question number one. So we're going to choose the correct verb tenses to complete the sentences. That's what we're going to do here. So number one says, I'm looking for Dave. Did you see? Do you see? Have you seen him? And in the part B, it says, well, let's go one by one. So which one it will be the correct? Did you see? Do you see? Have you seen him? Have you seen him? Have you seen? Everybody agrees? Yes. Okay. Have you seen? And the other one says, he's ill. He has cold, was calling or cold five minutes ago. Cold. Cold. Everybody agrees? Cold. Yes. Yes. Good. Let's see. Number two says, I will have left, we leave, or I'm leaving on the 2 p.m. train. <laughs> Number two and three are <laughs> like matching <laughs> the idea. I know, I know. So this is the difficult part. But of course, mm -hmm. speaking of grammar, there is almost always a solution, right? That's why we're doing this one. So we check what we know and then we can review some things, right? I will leave in that case, the second. I will leave. Everybody agrees? Agree with Ana Claudia. Will. Okay. Please call me as soon as you will arrive, are going to arrive or arrive. 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 Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Arrive. That's the one. I agree with Roxana. Huh? Very good. Nice. It seems that we agree on the verbs. Number three. By the time he was 20, he had won, was winning, or won 10 tournaments, actually. Won? Won. Everybody agrees? Yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> it's uh, a confusing this. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, I'm doing this because remember that this is the kind of thing that you are going to face uh -huh. the certification, right? <laughs> so, Thank you for reminding us. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a piece of cake, you know, it's no big deal. Yeah. Of course, of course, that day, maybe you will be a little bit nervous or things like that, but you're going to practice. <laughs> I mean, we are practicing already, so. Okay. And that is that is good. I mean, it's, don't don't be afraid of that one. Okay. I have done that several times and it's kind of very easy. And mm -hmm. you can get, as I remember, you can get a maximum of 900 points. Mm -hmm. So the very first time that I took that one, I took 870 points. I mean, uh -huh. so mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's a piece of cake. I mean, but of course, has a trick. Mm -hmm. Grammar. Grammar is tricky sometimes, right? And for the listeners, of course, we're going to practice as well. So don't worry about that one. And if we are together in the last level of the advance before you take the toy, we actually were going to practice here an actual, a real toy test. So you mm -hmm. you understand how it goes. Okay. So uh, okay. <laughs> don't worry. This is going to be a piece of cake. So we're starting right now, actually. Good. So let's continue with this thing. Number four, it says, Patrick, hi, what have you done in New York? Uh, do you do in New York? Are you doing in New York? What are you doing? Are you doing, says one and another? Same, are you doing? Are you doing? <laughs> yes. Are you doing? Very well, what are you doing in New York? Hi, I... I've just arrived, I just arrived, or I am just arrived. This is easy. 
I've just arrived. I had the first one. I I just arrived. All right. I've just arrived. I'm here with one of my colleagues who gives will be giving will give a presentation at the university this afternoon. Will give. Will be given. Oh, will be giving. Exactly. Sounds good. Will be giving. Mm -hmm. Be remember the verb to be. Yep. Will be given. Mm -hmm. Will be giving. Mm -hmm. Everybody agrees on will be giving? Yes, let's try. Let's give it a shot, right? This is just a practice. Will be giving. Number five. How long have you been knowing or do you know or have you known each other? Have you known? Have you, you known? known? Mm -hmm. Have you known? Okay, it seems that you agree, you study it, that's nice. <laughs> Part B, we go out or are going out or we've been going out for 10 months. We've been, we've going, been out. going out. Been going out. Been going out. Yeah, yeah, everybody agrees, that's nice. Number six, when I turned around uh -huh, or had turned, or was turning? Turned. 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 Mm -hmm. Okay, turned. Was turning also. Mm -hmm. So turn or was turning? Uh, let's see what the, the other part says. That the ah, bike. Yeah. That's a yeah. good trick, yeah. The bike was disappearing, had disappeared or disappeared. It wasn't there anymore. The bird had, had disappeared. Had disappeared. Everybody agrees? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Had disappeared. So, and this one, when I turn around, right? Yeah. Okay. Very good. So, number seven. We waited, are waiting, or had been waiting for over an hour when just when John just called and well, let's continue with that after. Had been waiting. Had been waiting. Had been waiting. Had been waiting. Well, nice. Uh, when just uh, when John just called and said, "Sorry, guys, I, I've had, I had, or I was having a problem. I can come and he." I had, had, uh, had. Or I've had. I had. 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 Only had. Yes. Okay. I can come and he had hung up, was hanging up, hung up. Hung up. Hung up. Okay. Because there is an action, he just hung up. Okay, very good. Hang up. Number eight. I'm totally stressed out now, but this time next week I I'll have had. I'm having. I'll be having a mojito on a beach in Ibiza. I'll be, I'll having. be having. I'll, I'll be, be having. Okay, I'll be having. Yeah, nice. Number nine. Is it true? Are you going to propose to Erica or are you proposing or will you propose? Will you propose? Uh, will you propose? Will you propose? Uh, okay. Agree, right, everybody? Mm -hmm. Just, I never wasn't or was never being, I have never been so sure about anything in my life. I've never been. I've never been. Everybody agrees? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, let's check the other one. Then will come the reality <laughs> with the answer. <laughs> it is estimated that by the year 2025, today's world a population of 5.8 billion will have risen, will rise, will be rising. Will rise. Will rise. Will rise. Will rise. It's estimated. Okay. Mm -hmm. Will rise. 
to 8.3 billion, most of them are going to live, will be living, will live in cities. Will be living? Will be living? Everybody agrees? Yeah. Will be living. Well, will be living. Mm -hmm. Will be living. Mm -hmm. Okay, the oh my God, <laughs> she can't <answer. laughs> <laughs> Okay, <laughs> number one is fine. Okay, uh, we use present perfect to talk about recent events when we don't say when they happen. And the second one, we use simple past because it's a finished action. Good, my friend. The score actually is 75. We have five incorrect. Let's check. Okay, in this one, um, it says we can use the present continuous I'm living or mm -hmm. future continuous I'll be living mm -hmm. to talk about future arrangement because it's an arrangement. Then we're going to be using either the present continuous or the mm -hmm. future continuous. In my opinion, it's better the present continuous, okay? I'm living. I'm living on the 2 p.m. train because it's an arrangement that I did. Remember that, okay? In the second gap, we were right. So we use the present simple to talk about the future in future time clauses. So when, as soon as, once, all of those, we're going to use the present, the simple present. Number three, okay, we uh, used one, but it was not good. We use the past perfect simple to talk about events that happened earlier in the past. Had it's one. Had one, right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Not only one, had one, because he's, by the time he was 20. Something that, that happens time, in the past, right? Exactly. He had one at that time, had one already. Okay. Mm -hmm. So. Yes, right. and continue being a winner, right? Exactly. I mean, he can continue playing. He can continue increasing mm -hmm. okay. the trophies. So, yeah, that is an action in an action. Okay. Mm -hmm. Surpassing to the past. Good. Number four, all three were correct, okay? And the explanation is here. We use present continuous to talk about actions in progress now. So what are you doing in New York? And we use the present perfect to talk about recent events when we don't say when they happened. With already, yet, just recently, today, this week. That is also something that we need to remember, right? And then on the third one is a future arrangement. So we'll be giving. So can you see here that we use the one that it was correct? Okay, for number five, both were correct. On the first one, present perfect simple with non-action verbs to talk about unfinished situation from the past. The verb no is a non-action verb. So it cannot be used in continuous form. That is very, very important, okay? So in the second one, we use the present perfect continuous with action verbs to talk about situations that started in the past or are still true. Perfect, my friends. Number six, both were correct. In the first one, past simple to talk about past finished events, okay? Uh, in a narrative, we use the past simple to describe the main events in chronological order. Okay, so that's why we use the perfect, uh, the past perfect to talk about events that happened earlier in the past. Very good. Okay, uh, here we had one mistake, the second one. They all were correct. So the first one was correct, and we use the past, uh, the past perfect continuous to talk about continuous actions. In the second one, we should have been using the present perfect simple to talk about recent events. And the last one was correct because he just hung up, right? Okay. So only the second one, remember. Number eight was correct. So future continues to talk about actions that will be in progress at a center time in the future. Very good. And a common expression with this tense is at this time, tomorrow, this time, next, or whatsoever. Number nine, we have the first one incorrect okay uh, we will use be going to to talk about intentions or, or plan no will be going to the verb to be i am going to okay 
And the second one was correct because, I mean, was an action, uh, not in the specific things. It was a period of time in his life, right? For my whole life, I have done this or this or this other thing. And the last one, we have one incorrect and the other one is correct. So on the first one, we have to use the future perfect to talk about an action that will be finished or complete. And the second one was correct, was the future continuous, okay? Very good. So, and uh, well, there are more, but I guess the score was good enough. So 75 is good. I have more tests for you and this week we will be doing some other tests, okay? This is a different thing. Uh, present, perfect, simple, or continuous. Okay, let's make it. Are you ready? So, mm -hmm. yeah, there are different tests. You know, I found a lot of tests that are very interesting, so we can analyze about this. Number one, have you been taking the dog for a walk yet? Or have you been taking, or have you taken the dog for a walk yet? The third one, did you take it? Okay, somebody say the third, have you taken? And the other people? I'm a re. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Have you taken the dog for a wall yet? Good. No, I haven't. I, I've been working, I'm working, I worked. All... I've been working. I've been working. Everybody agrees? Yeah, because he says, I've been working all day. Okay, mm -hmm. very good. And then number three, it says, I've just come. I've just been coming. I've just coming home from work and... I've just come. Mm -hmm. I've just come. Everybody agrees? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Home from work and I... Haven't been had or haven't been having or haven't had the time to walk the dog yet. I haven't had. Haven't, haven't had. had. Okay. Haven't had. Nice. And then it says, uh, so how long has the dog been or has the dog or has the dog been being the dog? Mm -hmm. <laughs> has the dog been? Mm -hmm. First one, has the dog been? Okay, seems that everybody agrees. Nice. So, how long has the dog been home alone? For about six hours. You have walking, have been walking, or have walked the dog zero times. Have been walking the dog zero times. You have been walking. Okay, everybody agrees. Uh, can I read the, the rest of the sentence? I wish it. Of course. Mm -hmm. It says, mm -hmm. you, the dog zero times since last weekend. Uh, then it is, you have, have walked, you have walked the dog zero times. Okay. You have the, walked the dog zero times. So everybody agrees on this one? We have, have been walking or have walked. Mm -hmm. Have walled. Have walled. Let's take that one and let's uh, see how it goes. Why don't you take him for a walk? Well, I've done things. I've been doing things. I've been done things all day too, you know. I've been doing. Mm -hmm. I've been doing. I've been doing. Everybody agrees on this. Okay, things all day too. You know, I have a very important meeting tomorrow and I haven't been finished, haven't finished, have been finishing presentation, my presentation yet. Haven't finished. Haven't finished. Haven't finished. Good, haven't finished. 
my presentation yet. Okay, I will go then. Have you seen or have you been seeing or have you seen the color and the leash? Have you seen? 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 Yeah, some of those are very nice. Everybody says the same. They are in the kitchen, by the way. Have you been eating? Have you ate? Have you eaten anything yet? Have you eaten? Have you eaten? Have you eaten? Have you eaten? Okay, my friends. This is so exciting. Let's see. Let's see. Okay, perfect. Wow. Nice, congratulations. <laughs> yeah. Good 100. job. Let's take the toy right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, right, let's, let's practice a little bit more. So with this topic, you are amazing. Let's check another one. <laughs> Indirect uh, questions is this one. So we're going to choose the correct forms to complete the following questions that are direct and indirect questions uh-huh so the first one it says i don't know the answer how many times i do have i have do i have to tell you do i have do i have do i have, do do I have? I have? okay mm -hmm. so how many times do i have to tell you good let's see number two i don't know why is he always whether is he always why he's always so unhappy? Why is he always? Why, why is... he's always? Why he's, he's always? always. Why, he... uh -huh. why he's always? Why he's always? The first one or the third one? Third one. Third one. Third one. <laughs> okay, is he or he's always? Is he always he, he's always. Yeah. He's always. I mean, I, I think that we are half and a half and we need to make our mm -hmm. decision, right? Yeah. Um, no, the thing is that uh, when you don't have uh, into, uh, this, uh, sino I don't no, I don't remember how, uh -huh. how uh, it's an A, but when you use an interrogative form, you have to to use his in the first. But when you don't have the the question, you can question use one. he is, right? Well, there are. I mean, the thing is that there are indirect and direct questions, and sometimes mm -hmm. it's first the verb to be, and sometimes it's second. In this case, I won't tell you the grammar right now until we finish, and remember that it has to be natural right it has to be mm. for, for me is why is he always okay why is he always so unhappy mm. uh, and other people let's see mm. there is a fact that he is unhappy Okay. Ah, it's so confusing. <laughs> <laughs> of course, we're going to check, I mean, the, the reason why it's correct or not correct, right? But by now, we need to take a decision. In mind that you're in a test. In a mm -hmm. test, I mean, there you are in front of the question and saying, oh, my goodness, it might be the first one or the third one. So mm -hmm. I, you need to choose one, right? Which one do I choose? Let's see. I will say that why he's always. He's always. Okay. One more. This is the winner. Who says the next vote? Why is he always? Is he always? Okay. Let's choose is he always? And let's see and remember this one. Okay. Mm -hmm. Number three, do you have any idea when the results will be published? Will be the results published? Will the results be published? Think about it. Take your time. Okay. Remember, it should be natural. 
the results will be published, I think. Okay, the results will be published. Will the results be published? Will the results be published? First and third. One and two. No, one and three. Will the results be published? Will the results be published? One more. Will be the results published? Okay, we are two and two. Ah, oh, but that was the second one. So we have two. We have one, one, and two. That is it. One, one, and two. One more vote. One, one, and three. I'm sorry, there was a cutout. Could you please repeat? One, one, and three. One, one, and three. Okay. So it will be, will the results be published? Let's see. Number four. How many people you called, called you? Did you call for the party? Did you call? Did, did you, call? you call? Did you call? Everybody agrees on this? Mm, yes. Okay, let's give it a shot. I wonder how long this cold weather will last. Or how long will this cold weather last? Or how this cold weather will last? How long this cold weather will last? Okay, the first one. Mm -hmm. Number one, anybody else's? Everybody agrees? I agree. You agree? I wonder how long this cold weather will last. Well, it's very hot in here, to be honest. Okay, number six. Did she tell you how often should you take the vitamins or you should take the vitamins or do you take the vitamins? You should take the vitamins. You should, okay. The number two, and the rest of the class agrees. Mm -hmm. You agree. Yes. The number two. Number two. You should take the vitamins. Okay. <laughs> the dog says that it's not that one, but anyways, we choose. It. <laughs> okay. Number seven. I like to know whether can I use the new product for the experiment, or if I can use the new product, or whether I can use a new product for the experiment. If I, if, if I, can. no, that's fine. We love dogs here. We're pet friendly. <laughs> Where can I use the new product? If whether can I use and if I can. Well, one one. So, uh huh. If can I use. If can I use is winning. One more vote. If can I use. If can I use the new product for the new... Okay, let's take that one and let's figure it out. Number eight. Could you tell me why do you leave or are you leaving or you are leaving? Do you live? Do you live? Do you live? Do you live? I mean... Are you living? Are you living? Okay, are you living? Are you living? Are, are you, you living? living? Okay, are you living wins this one. Number nine, can I ask you how long have you been living here? Have you lived here? Have you been living? No, you have been living here. Have you been living? Have you been living? Have you been living? Have you been living? Okay. Number 10, why? I wouldn't call her. Why shouldn't I call her? Why I shouldn't call her? Why shouldn't I call her? Why shouldn't so I, call, I call, her? call her? I shouldn't. shouldn't okay, I we have one her. one. Huh? The, the second is right. Shouldn't I call her? Shouldn't I call her? Okay. Shouldn't I call her? Shouldn't I call her? Okay. Yeah. Let's see. <laughs> With the indirect questions. I don't know. Dun, 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 dun. And you got 50. Oh my God. So here we have a situation, okay? So um, it says, number one, I don't know the answer. How many times do I have to tell you? So that is correct. That was correct. This is a direct question. So that's why we use the normal way for question. Do I have? Okay. So the direct question is in the normal way. 
of the question. So it's going to be auxiliar, the subject, and the verb. And the indirect is going to be the other way around. Okay. So number one was correct. Number two was not correct. So the correct answer is why he's always, he's always. Mm -hmm, because that's uh, mm -hmm. Okay. This is an indirect question. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this was one of the, the ones mm -hmm. that we were stuck. We were in so saying. sure. Uh -huh. Yeah. That that is good. I mean, because you have an idea and you were you were doubting, but now you know. Now you know that this is an indirect question and then it's going to be uh, like the normal sentence, not like a regular question. Okay. Why he's always unhappy? I don't know. I can't tell. Number three was not correct. So the correct was, do you have any idea when the results will be published? Okay. And um, yeah, this is an interesting The same question. subject, let's be. Exactly. It's mm -hmm. going to be the same thing, right? So we need to identify uh, whether they are indirect or direct questions. Mm -hmm. That will be. It. Number four was correct. This was a uh, direct, right? So how many people did you call for the party? Uh, this is not a subject question because you are asking about the object, not the subject. The subject is you. So this is a direct question. In regular questions, we use the auxiliary plus the subject plus the verb. Interesting. So let's check number five. It was correct. This is an indirect question. In indirect questions, the order is subject plus verb. So we use how long to ask about the length of time a situation lasts. So it's going to be, I wonder how long this cold weather will last. This, if you see the, the structure of the sentence, it might feel like the, the organized, but it's correct because it's an indirect question. So that is the key. Number six was correct. So this is an indirect question again, and we uh, we switch the orders, right? So did she tell you how often you should take the vitamins? No, you, no, should you, right? It's you should, like a regular sentence, not like a question. Number seven was not correct. So I like to know if can I use is not correct. So in this one, uh, this one was an indirect question. In indirect questions, the order is subject plus verb. Again, right? So in indirect, just no question without question words, we can use either if or whether. So, but in this case, mm -hmm. it's going to be because of the order, it's going to be whether I can use. Okay, no, can I? Because it's not like a regular question. So that is the explanation in number seven. Number eight was not correct. Could you tell me why uh, you are leaving? Again, this is an indirect question and the order is subject and then the verb. Okay. And number nine was also incorrect. Can I ask you how long you have been living here? Because it's an indirect question. First is the subject, you, and then the verb, have been living. Okay, and for number 10, that was correct. This is a direct question. In normal questions, we use auxiliary plus the subject plus the verb. So why shouldn't I call her? Okay, so, but the good thing here is that we check that we have a problem with indirect questions. So now we need to know that we need to study indirect questions. Sometimes, these topics are difficult for us because in Spanish, we don't have anything like that. And whenever we see a question, we we are still thinking in Spanish. So that is the real problem. So we need to understand that there are some things that are totally different. Don't think in Spanish. As I was telling you, think it naturally. And now we know that we need to study indirect questions that is very important here in this exercise almost all uh, the wrong that we have they were indirect questions so it's a subject that we need to check out
okay? Uh, 15 more minutes. Let's do one more on this one. Uh, let's give it a shot again, okay? Again, indirect questions. Let's give it a shot. And if we are not correct on this one, we're gonna study on that one, okay? So, number one, I like to know how can I contact her? How I can contact her? How do I contact her? How I can contact her? How I can contact how I can. her? Subject how plus verb. Okay, very well. Remember that there are some questions that are direct questions as well, right? So that is important. Mm -hmm. It's mixed. Some of they are direct and some of them are indirect. Let's see number two. I was wondering where you found, where did you find, uh, where you found you the recipe? Where you found. Where you found. Mm -hmm. Where you found. Where you Everybody found. good? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Number three. Would you mind telling me how much did the sofa cost or how much cost the sofa? How much the sofa cost? Think about it. Take your time. How much cost the sofa? How much cost the sofa? How much did the sofa cost? No, let's see. Okay. How much? This is a past action. Hmm. How much the sofa cost, maybe? How much the sofa? The sofa, they say. How much? The... <laughs> <laughs> no, the, the third one. The, the third one, this one. How yes. much the sofa cost? This one. Mm -hmm. yeah. Everybody good? How much the sofa cost? Okay, mm -hmm. let's figure it out. Number four, how long it is going to take, or is it going to take, or it's going to take to finish the project? Mm hmm, he's trying to wonder, right? Um... Is it going to take? Is it B is... for me? It is? Uh -huh. hey, letter B. Letter B. Okay, we have some votes for letter B. Let's move with letter B. Good. Number five. Okay. Uh, how much time you have been living or how long you've been living? How long have you been living in this house? How long have you been living? The third one, yeah. How long have you been living? C. Yes. Okay. Let's go to the next ones. Could you tell me what are you afraid or what you are afraid or what you are afraid of? Ah, this is an easy one. What are you afraid? I'm sorry, A, B, or C? I don't get it. I didn't get it. A. A, what are you afraid? Everybody A. agrees? The third what? one, what are you, you afraid, afraid of? Yeah, the third one, I guess. What you yeah. are afraid of. What you are afraid of. Okay, what uh, you are afraid of. Number seven, do you know if he, uh, I mean, if is he going to come? If he's going to come, whether is he going to come? Whether. <laughs> whether. <laughs> mm -hmm. Whether, whether is, is he going to come? Mm -hmm. See them. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think this is a direct question. Okay. Yeah, it's tricky because you said is you, you know? have the verb to be right to do. I'm sorry. Yeah, do the, the, the mm -hmm. answer is could be yes, I do or I don't. Mm -hmm. I don't do you know if uh, maybe number two? Uh huh. He's going to yeah. Come. Letter B. B. Uh, if he's okay. going to come. Yes. Let's try. Oh, <laughs> let's give it a shot. Yeah, that's why we're here. Number eight. I like to know why you are acting so weird. Why are you acting so weird? Why act you so weird? Why well, you I are act acting it. so weird? So letter A. Mm -hmm. 
why are you acting so weird? I, I, I don't know. <laughs> Hmm, we have one for A and one for B. Letter A. A. Mm -hmm. One more. A. <laughs> A. Okay, yeah, let's yeah, yeah. make the letter A. Very nice. Number nine. Do you have any idea? Is who the man in the black? Ah, that is weird. Who's the man in black? Who the man in black is? Well, of course, it's not letter A, right? Who the man in black is? Who's the man in black? We have B and C, one and one, and the rest of the class. B. B, okay. Okay, and the last one. Can you, well, where is the new student from? Or where the new student is from? From where is the new student? Can you tell me? From where? From where is the new student? Mm -mm. No, 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 no. Wait. Where is the new student? Where is the new student from? Exactly. Where is the new student from? The first one. I'm sorry. The first one. Everybody agrees? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So if you have a hundred, you win a car. Everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, also the go. second one it applied yeah. where the new student is from. Ah, we can go back, yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. So yeah. number 10. Mm -hmm. My god, that is a confusion. <laughs> well, let's leave it in that way. Let's see. Okay, <laughs> let's give it a shot. So dun, 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 dun. <laughs> let's see how it goes. 90 good mm -hmm. was better my friends nice you can see that you improve just by thinking right to stop and think mm -hmm. of course it's always a good idea to read about indirect questions it's always a good idea when you have doubts on whether we're going to use this or this other one we need to to identify why we are having some problems right but that's why we're doing these things so everybody check and agree okay so what we're gonna do, but 90 is amazing. Let's check. So uh, number one, uh, this is an indirect question. Mm -hmm. An indirect question, the order is subject plus verb. So how uh, I like to know how I can contact her. Very nice. Number two is also correct. So this is an indirect question again. So of course, the option was going to be, I was wondering where you found the recipe. And you know, when you're speaking, sometimes we forget about the structures. Because when we're speaking, we almost never use these indirect questions. I mean, all Latin American people, we are like that because of the Spanish. Okay, but this is like that. I was wondering where you found. Or no, where did you find? Okay. So number three is, of course, correct. So also an indirect question. Would you mind telling me how much the sofa costs? <laughs> nice. This one was very good, the analysis that you got. This was actually a difficult one. Number four is also correct. How long is it going to take to finish the project? This is a regular question. So that's why you remember in this why we, we were like, oh, I don't know. It's going to be this or this other one. And it just was the position of the verb. But that is the difference, okay? So this is like a, a regular question, a direct question. So the first is going to be the verb, and then it's going to be the, uh, the subject. Number five was also correct. And this was a direct question, okay? How long have you been living in this house? Regular question, okay? And uh, let's move to number six, which is also correct. Could you tell me what you are afraid of? The of was key here. I mean, that's what I told you. Oh, this is an easy one. I mean, because of, with, with the of, you know, that is something that is going to be very, very, very common in the toy. There are some tips and words that are going to tell you this is the one, okay? Good. Now, in the in this, um, the first two um, option is 
um, it doesn't make sense uh, with the answer what are you afraid yeah i mean it's, it's weird right it's uh, you say that one and you say i mean i don't feel it very well you don't feel it sometimes that what you are afraid of is asking trying to find out exactly so and also remember that afraid when whenever you're asking off is going to be there right so i'm afraid of this afraid of whatever so mm -hmm. yeah number seven uh also good do you know if he's going to come this is also an indirect question that's why we need to set first the um the subject and then the verb that will be it good good number eight I like to know why you are acting so weird. This is also an indirect question, okay? Why you are, not why are you, okay? Very good. This is the only one that was not correct. So an indirect question, and do you have uh, any idea who the man in black is? Since it's an indirect question, the verb to be is going to be at the very end. Okay? I say, see. <laughs> Yeah, I, oh, I remember that there I were some you. of you. Uh, yeah. I was Actually, the only one that I say. <laughs> <laughs> good. In my it would be a hundred, but anyways, good. Yeah. So and the last one it says, uh where is the new student from? Can you tell me? So this is a regular question. It's mm -hmm. it's just the question, right? All the question is there. So it's going to be uh, it was kind of easy to identify with that one. Very good, very good. So yes, uh, it's a good idea as I was telling you to to review the indirect questions because uh, yeah, I mean, we did great here, but whenever you have the chance, that is a topic that we can check into. Any questions so far? Not by now, teacher. No. Good, tomorrow we're gonna do some other tests, but also we're gonna speak some of some other topics, okay? so. And we're gonna do some other dynamics this week so we can change uh, how we are doing everything. I know that sometimes just by reading and just by speaking about one specific thing for five days is not that good enough. So anyways, that's why I'm gonna change that at the last, this one. I'm gonna check the attendance then and then let's go to bed. So, Ada, Azucena Cáceres Mendoza. Good. Ana Claudia Gonzalez Velasquez. Present teacher. Good. Dani Josué García Martínez. Present. Good. Fernando Marvin Gonzalez Martínez. Present. Good. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejía. Present teacher. Good. Heidi Eugenia Salguero de Rivas. Present teacher. Good. Liliana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Present teacher. Good. Jose Marcos Rodríguez Ayala. Present. Good. Jose Osmin Rivas Navas. Jose Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Juan Present, Miguel. Sure. Oh, good. Juan Miguel Bran Mejía. María Alejandra Barrientos Romero. Present. Ramón Enrique Mata Escobar. Roberto Luis Umaña Orellana. Roxana Yvette Asensio de Mejía. Present. Good. Sonia Guadalupe Benítez de Claros. Present. Good. Suleima Yvonne Moreno de Hernández. Okay, before we finish, three things. Uh, thank you, Jose Rivas. Uh, for first of all, remember that uh, we need to ask to human resources, or if you send it, uh, to send the papers for the next level. It's very important. Some of uh, people here in the group haven't sent that one in. We really need to move on so you can start very soon. Also, remember that on the weekend, we need to finish the platform, the whole thing, okay? The 101 of today is open. Whoever wants to stay, of course, it will be a pleasure to help you out. So, my friends, it was a pleasure to be with you tonight. I hope you have a very nice night. See you tomorrow and dream in English. Thank you, teacher. Thank, Bye. You. Thank you, teacher. Good night, everyone.
I don't know if Eliana will stay. I don't know either, but if you have questions or if you want to practice, of course, we can do it. Uh, well, teacher, uh, I finished the platform already. Okay. But I just have a doubt with the last part of the first, uh, for the first, what, section will be? Ah, okay. For the, the ones that had some errors. Yep, that's right. Okay. Yeah, I, see I was that. reviewing. Moving yes. On with the platform. Yeah. Okay. So let's check on that one. Let me just go there. Uh, which one is the 101 or the 1.9? One uh, 1.9. Ah, okay. The 1.9. Let's check into that one. Let's see. Okay, so um, do you have a question about a specific exercise or would you like to check everything? Uh, I would like to check everything. Okay, let me then just show you here. Okay, this is, uh, I don't know, this is 1.9, hold on a second. And this is the other one, okay. So, That's... okay, so for the first one, well, let me read uh, just to remember. Read the following sentence identify whether or not the feature parenthesis are the parenthetical information set up. By, okay. For the first one, uh, it should be the best way to achieve a uh, product, productive and diverse environment is not just leadership by example, but through the use of detailed strategy, strategies, not period at the end, and not spaces. Okay, without period. Not period. Yeah, sometimes that is the, the big difference, right? But that's good. We can check it. Don't worry. Okay. Mm -hmm. And how was your day, teacher? Was very hard, but I'm very happy to be here. Oh, really nice. What you only that? work. Ah, that's fine. Well, was really well. Um, to the worship, really good. Okay. During the worship, really good because I learn, uh, new things. So, every day in that position, you every day learn something new. That's that really, really nice. Yeah, that's really good. Perfect. I'm very happy that you are also learning there. So, yeah, I most of the time when I don't know uh, some procedures, I always request explain to someone that maybe with a higher position uh, who explain. Okay, and very good. Yeah, I asked. I asked for it. And that's really fine. Yeah, I mean, that is also very important. Whenever we don't know a procedure, of course, to look for the right person. And then, of course, little by little, we we become an expert, right? So that's good. That's right. Okay, number two. Would you like me to check number two? Let me see. If not, I will tell you because I delete. Okay, uh, number two says uh, inclusion. Initiatives in most and the comma, group. right? Initiatives, comma. Uh -huh. Inclusion of initiatives, comma, comma. right? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. In most workplaces, comma, are usually poorly founded and disconnected uh, from, from other general, other right? General training program. training program, yeah. This Without one, period. I, I said the period on that one, but if you don't have the period, I guess you should take it. But if it doesn't take it that one, you can set the period. So that's the problem. Sometimes you need the period, sometimes you don't need it. Uh, in this case, uh, I guess that we need. Yeah, I, I said it like that one, and it was correct. I, I'm playing with those, you know. Let me just check here. Yeah, with the period, it took it, yeah. 
Let me see if it takes it without the period. Sometimes it's like that. No, you need the period. Yeah. Yeah, you need the period. Okay. For the third one, it says differences in inter interpretation mm -hmm. of events, a common issue. Comma, and the comma, right? Of events, comma. After events. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Comma, and then a uh, common issue among employees who speak a different language, comma, can lead to miscommunication, period. We need the period here. Oh, I miss one comma. Diversity when it works. Okay, number four, it should be diversity and then comma. Uh-huh. Oh, in this case, the period is there. So diversity, comma, when it works, comma, increases profits for a uh, company in the period. Period. Yeah. And number five, if you are ready for that one, yeah, it, sh it should be a culturally, culturally diverse, diverse workforce, comma, opposite to its counterpart, comma, better understands diverse markets. Period. You need yeah. period. Yeah, we complete. So you have the points there, right? Yep. Yeah, everything are on green. Very good. I'm very happy that you now have this correct. So, and uh, of course, if you have more questions, you can chat with me or we can check. It. I mean, from now on, uh, the 101 is going to be free. So anybody wants to stay and it would be a pleasure. Yep. That's it. The truth. I really appreciate your time. Always. And your help. Yeah, any other question that you might have before we finish? No, teacher. Perfect. So, my friend, see you tomorrow. Have a good night. You too, teacher. Goodbye. Bye-bye okay. now. Good night. Bye. Good night.